Good morning, my friends. Um, happy February 16th. Wow, uh, here we go. We're halfway through the first quarter of the year. Um, I hope everyone had a lovely um, Valentine's Day. Um, and I know lovely means different things to different people. <laughs> uh, mine was very quiet, um, which is just the way I like them. So um, I didn't do much. Um, I just hung out. Uh, I um, I was uh, I still am <laughs> recovering from a week long trip to Disneyland in uh, Anaheim, California. Uh, my daughter was overdue for a trip. It's of course one of her favorite places on earth, the happiest place on earth, um, and. She missed it for her 18th birthday because of COVID, and um, and she's going to be graduating from high school this June. So we just bunched it all together and spent an entire week at Disneyland. So um, I was happy to be still recovering, and so uh, my Valentine's Day was very quiet and lovely. So. Um, all that said, uh, I missed you last week, and I feel like it's been a month since I've done a, a Facebook Live. It's only been <laughs> two weeks, um, but that's that's how time works, right? So um, today, well, first, of course, as always, if you'd be so kind as to make yourself known in the comments so I know that you're there, and if you have any particular questions or any kind of uh, you know, any kind of wisdom to share, by all means, please do share it. Um, our topic today is booking, booking ratios. When will I ever book? I think uh, people get super, super, super frustrated by their um, speed and consistency of booking. And uh, so it's a big topic and, and it's, um, in a certain sense, it's complex. In another sense, it's very, very simple. Um, and so we will talk about that. So let me just see who's here. Oh, John Gardner. Hi. Yay. Jane found us. Good. So happy that you're here. Um, uh, okay. So so I, I hear this a lot. Right? I hear like, I'm not booking. I'm not booking. I'm not booking. Um, and along with that, you know, reality, statement of reality is, you know, really sincere frustration. And um, it, um, you know, it, it makes people feel like they're not good enough and they're not doing things right. And, um, and people get defeated, you know, from that sense of like, I'm not working. Um, and so, my hope here is to just shed a little bit of light um, on the whole process and what our expectations are and what they should be. Um, you know, there's such a mix now. My dog just left the room. There's such a mix now in the voiceover world of people who've been doing it forever, who have a very, very distinct uh, experience of booking, and people who are, you know, kind of either are fairly new to the to to the work or kind of straddle both worlds you know um and so there's a lot of talk you know i think from um voice actors sort of of my generation and earlier you know um we have we talk about our work you know and and, and we talk about what we used to do when we you know and all those kinds of things, and and um, and I think the reality is, we're, it's such a different world where I have come from. I'll, of course, use myself as, as an example because I know my life best, right? So, um, you know, when I when I was coming up through voiceover, um, you know, I would say that my booking ratio was like one in ten, one in ten things that I auditioned for, I booked. And we had this great sense, you know. We, we, you know, we weren't auditioning from home. Um, we weren't competing with thousands and thousands and thousands of people across the country. Um, 
L.A., Chicago, New York. Um, and then, of course, there were smaller regional agent agencies that um, that booked their local talent, so careers could be had in Minneapolis and, um, you know, uh, Cincinnati and Cleveland and, you, you know, um, places where advertising markets were. But those were, you know, um, those were different sorts of careers. So, so when I was coming up, my, I, I was reading against 10 or 20 people, tops, right? Well, you're certainly going to book more often if that's all you're reading against, right? And where the talent pool um, is really consistent, we all could do the job, all the people who, are, who were reading on it. And you know what else was consistent? The pay rate. We were all, it was all union. We, we were all going to make the same. You know, there, there wasn't this race to the bottom of uh, how little will you do the work for, right? And as soon as you start racing to the bottom, more people come to the, to the mix, right? So, so we're kind of, current day voice actors are, in a sense, comparing themselves to an old market, an, an old model, right? So this newer model that is really, it's prevalent, it is the model now. Um, there are agents pretty much in every state, <laughs> you know, um, certainly every region of the country. Um, and all of those agents get this much of the same copy. Um, and so now we're not reading against 10 people or 15 people or 20 people. We might be reading against 100 people or 500 people. Um, and then you've got all of the work on the pay to play sites where there are, there could be hundreds, if not thousands of people attempting to audition for particular things, right? They may have a cutoff of, you know, 50, but that doesn't mean there aren't thousands of people who are trying to submit. And those people have, are having the experience of, oh my God, I'm not booking, right? So it's a vastly different world. And we are competing, each of us, including me, we are competing with far more people than we ever were before. And so, of course, our booking ratio is going to go down. It's going to. It's the reality of the, of the business these days, right? It's also <coughs> why, a few things, right? It's also why it's really important to when you do book something to cultivate the relationship with the client so they'll keep coming back to you, right? Um, it's why also um, you wanna have a good relationship with your agents so that they'll continue to send you copy. Now I know not, not everybody has agents and that's, that's, that's a reality too. Um, it's why you have to be consistent on pay to play sites if you use them. It's why you have to be on your game and you have to be among the first people to submit, right? It, it, it's, it's like the stakes are higher, you know? Um, there's certainly a lot more work to be had because of all of the other avenues um, through which we're booked, you know? Um, um, of course, all social media channels, um, you know, just all kinds, all kinds, all kinds of ways. It used to just be national network TV and then cable, you know, but that, that used to be it. And now it's, there's just so, so, so much work to be had, but at the same time, so, so, so many people who are vying for the same work. Um, at the, at the heart of this for me though, is, is the reason why we must be after the audition. If you don't audition, you will not work. Right? You won't. Unless you've cultivated relationships where you've got regular work and you don't audition anymore because you, you have so many clients or one or two or three clients from whom you get all of your work. But that's pretty rare. I mean, we, we all, we're all wanting to do new things, right? Um, so... It's why I sort of bang the drum of auditioning, auditioning, auditioning. Auditioning is the job. 
Auditioning is the job. And our job is to find as many opportunities to audition as we possibly can. Because the more you audition, the more likely you will be to book. That is the truth. And I see it in my own you know, life, my own audition life. There are some weeks where I just can't get to things. And there's a variety of reasons. Sometimes I'm just too bloody lazy, which is a terrible thing to admit, but <laughs> sometimes other parts of my life call you know, and I'm, ch and I choose some other things and I let some auditions go, but there is a consequence to that because if I, if I let those auditions go, they're no longer, that they're, it's no longer a possibility that I will book them. It's no, it's done. That's closed. That door's closed. And so that happens surely. Right. Um, but those times when I like ramp myself back up and I go, okay, I've sort of cleared the clutter away from my life and I, I can really focus, right? Those are the weeks when I'm turning in every audition, every day for weeks. The few weeks that follow, those are the weeks that I work, right? Um, so, so when I say like back in the day, I, I, I tire of myself sometimes, <laughs> but back in the day, um, when, you know, when I had a booking ratio of about one in 10, you know, um, it's very different now. And, and so here, here's what I will tell you. Well, a uh, um, a coaching client, um, sent me an email a couple of weeks ago and said, I just counted up how many auditions I did last year and how many bookings I got. And my ratio was about it was about 1%. It's about 1% of what I auditioned for. And, and she said, is that normal? Like what is happening? Like that just doesn't seem like enough. Like, like I feel like I'm not, like things aren't going well, you know? And I replied to her and I said, that's about right. 1%. That's about what I book. And the difference is I might have a thousand bookings, uh, sorry, a thousand auditions in a year, right? So if I have 10 new, new bookings, and of course bookings can turn into multiple bookings. It's certainly if it's a video game or if it's a, a dubbing job or um, even if it's, you know, commercials that are ongoing, right? It doesn't mean only 10 sessions. It means 10 new bookings, right? So that's about right. And a thousand, auditions in a year there are I know people who do twice that and they and they work more and they make more right so how many auditions are you doing if you're doing one a week that's 52 auditions a year and it's going to be a few years before you book on you know on if we're taking averages right um so audition, 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 audition. However you can find them, right? Um, let me just check to see who's chimed in here. Um, yeah. Hey, Larry. Hi, Amanda. Um, you lazy? That would imply that you're a human. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Jane, sometimes other parts of my life call to me. And it is okay. That's, that's exactly right. So... Um, so I just want to drive home this point about auditioning. Um, you must audition in order to book. And so if you're, if you are only getting, let's say you have an agent and you only get a few auditions from your agent every week. Well, it's time to expand. It's time to get on a pay to play site. It's time to talk to your agent and say, I would love more auditioning opportunities. Are there things that you think are appropriate for me? Um, that, you know, that I can, um, I can ask, you know, that you, that you send me the copy. Always remember that you're in partnership with your agent. So if you approach your agent, like, you're not sending me anything. How come I'm only getting five auditions in a week? Like, mm, like that's not how we want to approach our agents. We're working with them. They're our partners. And so we want to say, hey, I am loving getting the auditions that I'm getting from you. I would love to have more opportunity. Um, and if you want to have a conversation about that, if you're you know, if you need to know sort of more about me and what I, what it is that I think I'm good at and where I would excel, I'd love to have that conversation because I would love more opportunity, 
right? That's how we talk to, you know, reasonably <laughs> to these people who are, oh my God, agents work so hard. I, I just, they work so hard and mostly they're complained to by us. You know, when's the last time you said, wow, I'm really grateful for you and the opportunities that you provide me. And I, and I'm thankful for your bookkeepers and the people who send out payment and all of the, and do you have to deal with all the talent payment companies and like, oh my God, right? So we just always, that's just a side note to the, to this topic, right? We just have to remember that in our pursuit of auditions, we, we just have to remember who our allies are and our agents are our, our, our allies, our, our allies. That's a good tongue twister. Um, uh, if you aren't getting what you want on your pay to play sites, perhaps it's time to, uh, perhaps it's time to bring your, um, profile more up to date. Perhaps it's time to revamp it with new keywords and, um, right. Uh, um, so there are all kinds of things we can do in pursuit of more auditions, but, and, and a piece of the mindset of course, is that you really have to look at the, the audition as the job. If, if you don't look at the audition as the job, you will become resentful, you know, um, a thousand auditions in a year and I book 10, maybe this is an average, right? I could be pretty pissed at not booking more of, you know, of the 990 that I didn't book, right? Like, but you can't, we can't look at it that way. It really is a shift because so many people don't pursue the opportunity, right? And again, if you don't audition, you're not going to work. Um, another uh, client and colleague, you know, sort of wondered, it's, it, it applies, it applies as well to the slumps that we get sometimes, right? Um, another client called it a, a, a trough, you know, um, which, which I thought was great. It's like this, this, you know, pit, this divot, you know, on the road, right? Like, whoa, <laughs> what happened there? Um, it's the same, right? Um, if we, if we're wanting to be holistic in our lives, um, and we make choices like, okay, I have this thing to focus on over here this week, so I'm not gonna get to these auditions. Well, guess what? That's gonna have a repercussion. It's gonna have a consequence. It just is, you know? And so um, everyone, everyone from, you know, legendary Emmy-winning voice actors, they have their slumps. They, they dip down in the trough, you know, um, they're on the downslope of the roller coaster, right? It happens. It, it should be expected. It should be expected. And, you know, there was, there was a suggestion of like, perhaps it's my mi new microphone. I have to say, I doubt it. Unless your microphone sucks. If your microphone doesn't sound good and you sound, um, you know, and all of a sudden it doesn't sound like a professional quality recording, it's not your microphone. It's not your microphone. It's just, it's just a piece of the reality of voiceover. Um, and what I have done and which I share with you, what I have done over the years, when I have been on the downslope of the roller coaster in the trough, I always use those opportunities to do the other things in my business that need attention. I might coach with someone. I might update a demo. I might update my bio on my uh, website. Um, I might get in touch with clients, little email thing, perhaps a little newsletter to go out, right? Um, there's always something we can do, including balancing your business checking account. Like that needs attention too, right? Uh, you know, running reports and seeing, you know, I bet if you go through some reports over the last few years, you'll see, you'll see the, the ups and the downs, right? That's what mine looks like. It's just like, woo, it's up and down and up and down. Some years suck. 
Some years are great. Most years are, they're all right. You know, that's where they live. And, um, but great years are like, yeah, they come along, but mostly we're, we're all just work instance, right? And the audition is the work. The audition is the job. So let me, uh, let me come back here and see. Um, hi Vince. Uh, making the shift, making that shift can be a challenge. I love to audition and I don't sweat what happens after submission, but I'm having a slow period and it can get discouraging. Yes, it can. And, um, and you know, if you have a history of booking and you're just not booking right now, ride the wave, ride the wave and do things that, that focus and bring positivity to your life, right? So getting things done for your career is really a, like a great feeling. It's quite empowering. And the more empowered you feel, the better your auditions are going to be, right? If you take a slump and you kind of wallow in it, your auditions aren't going to be very good, right? Because you're, you're, you're sitting in that sort of like, oh, I'm not booking. Oh, no, fear and the worry, right? Fear and worry don't do much for our auditions, you know? And if we start to panic, um, panic shows up in a read, you know? Um, there are desperate reads and, uh, and we wanna avoid them at all costs, right? <coughs> so um, let me see if there are any other questions. Um, having pre-planned ways of lifting one's spirits, yes, um, yes. Um, it's really important, I think, to, um, it's really important to have, you know, a network of, um, a network of colleagues that you can, you can talk to about these things, right? That you can share this stuff with, because what you'll get is a mirror back that says, oh yeah, I, I, I definitely I was in a slump a few months ago, but uh, it's all right. It's turned around. I, I have a friend, you know, we, we talk back and forth. I, I have a couple of them, you know, that we, we talk about this stuff. And invariably, when I'm in a slump, one, one of my friends is, have, is like riding high, you know. Now, that's a difficult thing to like hold on to your composure, right? When you see other people around you who are booking and it's like, what, what happened to me this month or this year, you know. Um, but it happens. And again, it's like, thinking, thinking good thoughts, wishing them well, knowing that your turn will come, right? Um, those are, again, really important mindsets. And you have to actively choose to respond that way, right? Like I know for myself, there are times where I go, oh, God, I really wanted to book that. My friend booked it. And I, you know, then I go, wait, there have been plenty of times where I've booked things that, you know, my friends have wanted to book. So it's their turn now, and I'm happy for them, right? I genuinely am. I just sit in that moment like, oh, I really could have used that job. But you know what? So could my friend. <laughs> so um, again, it's perspective. It's having a long view of your career. I've had some bad, bad, bad years, right? Where, where it's like, wow, I hope my agents don't drop me, you know? But you keep, you keep writing, you keep turning in good auditions, great auditions, your best auditions. That's what matters. Turning in your best auditions, right? Um, I, hope I, uh, I hope that that addresses the, the question. Um, it's normal. Having a 1% booking ratio is, is totally normal. Um, and it just really brings to light the necessity of getting as many audition opportunities as you possibly can. Because the more you audition, the greater your chance of booking. So it's really kind of as simple as that. And then maintaining a positive attitude, preparing yourself. Preparing yourself when you're in a great spot, preparing yourself then for the slump that is to come. And it will come. They always do. 
They always do. And whether they lift or not depends upon whether or not you quit. If you quit, the slump will never lift. So you have to stay the course, right? Stay the course. Uh, I think that's all I have to say. I'm just going to start repeating myself and it'll get long. So um, I hope that that helps. Let me see if there are any final thoughts. Um, John, um, Jane, yes, thank you so much for your contributions to this. This is really, really helpful. So, um, okay. Uh, I, I'm not sure what is next week, but we'll discover that together. <laughs> I never know what's on the calendar until I see it on the calendar. It's kind of hilarious. So um, as always, feel free to ping me. Like, you know, just find me where you can, either on in the comment section of this uh, this post or send me, uh, send me a direct message. Um, and I'm happy to help however I can. So I hope, I hope, I hope. Um, it's such a simple question with really a simple solution. Audition as much as you can. Audition as much as you can. Stay the course. Yeah, you'll, you'll come out of it, I promise. All right, all right, my loves. Um, have a beautiful remainder of your day and the rest of your week. And I will talk to you next week. And until then, I will see you online. All right, ciao.